Vin Ballin's back, let's react. And right now we're back with another video by Jimmy High Roller. And the title of this video is When You Can't Shoot and Everyone Knows It. Let's go. Question. If you were an NBA GM and your team made the playoffs, what would you do if once you got there, your young three-time All-Star put up 11 points per game on a measly 4.5 shots, shot a historically bad free throw percentage, refused to shoot a three despite being a guard, and was virtually unplayable in the closing... Okay, so we already know that Jimmy is already talking about Ben Simmons. So let's just go with the video. ...of those big playoff games. Well, if you were the 76ers ownership, you'd hand this player a $177 million contract, making him the ninth highest paid player in the entire league, that player being Ben Simmons. Now, I'd be lying if I said that Ben Simmons was the only overpaid player in the NBA, but Ben Simmons is a special case because not only has he underperformed in big moments, he doesn't even care. Earlier this week, Ben Simmons showed up to a 76ers practice in sweats, going half speed, with what appeared to be a phone in his pocket and everything other than playing basketball with the Sixers on his mind. This brings forcing your way out to a whole new level, and the Sixers suspended Simmons for one game because of this, which, if I had to make a guess, I would say he couldn't care less about, since Ben chose to sit out their following game. Simmons wants out of Philadelphia by any means necessary. But he isn't the first player to want out of a team. Back in 2018, Kawhi Leonard forced his way out of San Antonio by just not playing, suiting up for only nine of the team's 87 games that season. In 2019, Anthony Davis forced his way out of New Orleans by, um, just not playing. Last season, James Harden forced his way out of Houston. Now, he didn't sit on the bench like Kawhi and AD. He just played so bad that he probably should have been on the bench. I mean... You want to take a guess at the exact moment Harden stopped giving a damn? Are Ben Simmons' actions in hopes of landing on a new team the most desperate and blatantly disrespectful we've ever seen? Well, it's debatable. A few seasons ago, Jimmy Butler wanted out of Minnesota, but Butler didn't get kicked out of practice for not wanting to participate. He did the opposite. The man whooped up on the Timberwolves starters with a bunch of third stringers while yelling, You need me. You can't win without me. Possibly the most Jimmy Butler thing I've ever heard. Back in 1997, Robert Ory forced his way to a trade by throwing a used towel onto what? his head coach's face in the middle of a game. Seriously? This really Whoa, happened. that's disrespectful right there. Robert was in a Lakers uniform within a week. But over the last few seasons, the star player doing whatever it takes to get out of an organization has been trending upwards. Empowerment is a good thing. Players should have the autonomy to dictate their future. But this is something completely different. Because Simmons isn't Kawhi Leonard, or James Harden, or Anthony Davis. He isn't a generational talent, and his organization didn't betray him. In fact, you could argue the exact opposite. The 76ers have spent the last four seasons building a roster suited specifically for Ben's exceptional but very limited skill set. Ben argues that with the right pieces around him, he could reach his full potential. Right. What happens when you can't shoot and everyone knows it? That question is quite literal, but let me broaden the question. What happens when you think you're a superstar, but everyone else knows you're not? Case of a good player who thinks he's a superstar. I'm not sure if this has ever gone well for anyone, ever. Here's an interesting chart displaying the continuity of every roster in the NBA from season to season. In other words, this chart tracks how much each NBA team changes its roster every season. And with one of the most turbulent rosters in the entire NBA is the 76ers, making adjustments to their team more than nearly every other organization in the league. A lot of these changes specifically made in order for Ben Simmons to succeed, potentially leading to success for the 76ers. And this plan was going relatively well until last season's playoffs. Uh, Simmons. This is the first. First time in his career he decided. Well, he was on this floor in game one, remember, as Simmons misses the first. Ben Simmons. Oh, he misses again. He's missing five consecutive free throws now. It's it's right it's right. It's right. It's right. This was it. Simmons. Possession. Good shots and possession. Doc, you think Ben Simmons can, can still be a point guard for, for a championship team like the one you guys want to become? Yeah, David, I don't know that question or the answer to that right now. Um... Must I remind y'all 
This man is one of the highest paid players in the NBA. And despite the organization standing steady beside him, mm -hmm. this guy... Okay, honestly, I don't think Ben Simmons really needs to shoot. I think he can just drive to the rim. But bro, you can at least try to shoot, bro. Like, be more confident in taking shots. And you gotta work on the free throws. Well, obviously, Ben Simmons is a very, very good basketball player, and he's better than I am. But I'm thinking that he can, that he can still one, be one of the most unique and greatest players of all time, honestly. Like, uh, one of the great point guards if he just finds his offense. Because he's already a good defender. Now, imagine if he has offense, bro. Imagine if he has a jump shot. Imagine if he has, you know, the ability to drive like LeBron. Like, you know, just find your offense, bro, honestly. Uh, but yo, I still res I I have respect for Ben Simmons. So, uh, one of my favorite players in the league too. I hope he finds his offense soon. It's demanding a trade. And as selfish and unaware as Ben is being to his teammates and coaches, his actions could potentially hurt the entire league. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, Ben Simmons has been selfish though. Ben Simmons has been selfish. As a whole. At this point, it only seems like a matter of time before Simmons finds himself suiting up with a different team. Which would mean that, for no justifiable reason, completely unwarranted, a player can just decide one day he doesn't want to be on a certain team anymore, and that team is held hostage, with money tied up in that player, and a roster situation that they are now forced to scramble and patch together. This goes beyond player empowerment, resembling something more like player dictatorship. Connor Bergen, a writer for SB Nation, discussed potential changes to how the NBA structures player contracts due to these forced demands. In the modern era of player empowerment and freedom of movement, franchise executives argue they need more protection from trade requests and player non-compliance. Team officials have recently discussed the possibility of introducing monetary repercussions for players who ask out. There's got to be some kind of penalty or fine. These guys sign the Supermax and they want to get traded the next day. Some GMs have suggested a penalty totaling up to 70% of a player's salary. What? Which most GMs think would be a big enough fine to incentivize these players to stay put. But even a massive penalty like that wouldn't change anything at all. What happens when a player doesn't explicitly say he wants out, but instead just plays like trash? The team would have no choice but to trade that player, and since he didn't demand a trade, he wouldn't be penalized. After decades of ownership having all the leverage in these situations, players were given more power. And this is what happens when a player decides to abuse that power. But just imagine if the league was able to put together a plan that would prevent star players from leaving their teams prematurely. This would mean far less movement in the NBA, more parity, less teaming up of ultra elite players and super teams. This could potentially create a league like we saw in the 90s and early 2000s, where every team had its star player, and that star player stuck with the team through thick and thin. A far-fetched but hopeful proposition. But the Iris whole Ben Simmons situation is that there are players in the league that could justifiably pull a stunt like this, but they don't. Damian Lillard has given his blood, sweat, and tears to the Portland Trailblazers for the last nine seasons. And despite the franchise doing little to accommodate his greatness, he remains loyal to the team. A Washington Post article written by Jerry Brewer pretty much summarizes Simmons' antics. Star movement has filled a vacuum created by lack of parity. It has caused personal acquisition to become as popular as the regular season and playoffs. Right now, it seems to be a vicious cycle of instability led by players who have assumed power without really knowing what they want. On the whims of entitled 20-somethings who would rather escape the grind or who would rather go to the next shiny market than coexist with another star. Every prominent player is in pursuit of a move that supposedly will change the landscape of the league. And possibly the worst part, Simmons isn't even a superstar. Sure, he's a good player, but when the going gets tough, how many people want Simmons dictating the success of their team down the stretch? And Brewer's comments on escaping the grind really hits the nail on the head with Ben Simmons. This man has had no progression in four NBA seasons. He hasn't expanded his game. He hasn't developed even a sign of a jump shot. I'm not in the gym putting up shots with the man, but it wouldn't be a stretch to say that Ben has avoided the grind. He's content with being the player that he is while deflecting his faults and shortcomings on a team that has done everything to help him. Think about it. Everything that makes Ben Simmons a great player, it's all God-given. His vision, his IQ, his passing, his size. Mans is getting paid $33 million a year for being 6'10". 
And this is coming from someone who has been on the Ben Simmons bandwagon since he was a senior in high school. Must we not forget that Kobe wanted out of L.A. back in 2007. He wasn't happy. Management was at an all-time low, and the Lakers were doing little to meet Kobe's needs. So what does he do about it? The man turned around and won back-to-back -back championships. Back in 1998, the Chicago Bulls front office did just about everything in their power to disrespect Michael Jordan. And even MJ didn't make unrealistic demands with the organization. The man just retired. At the end of the day, I don't see this situation going in Ben's favor. Either Ben stays on a team where trust has been completely broken, or the Sixers trade him to a team that can take on his massive contract and he can hit the reset button. New city, same old jump shot, or lack thereof. New team, same sense of entitlement. This is what happens when you can't shoot, and everyone knows it. Hope you all enjoy. And as always, until next time. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. What do you guys think? Do you think Ben Simmons can still turn his career around? And where do you guys think that will happen? Peace.